Hello. In this lecture, we'll give an introduction to a critical concept from calculus called limits, but we are going to do so by looking at graphs. We're going to begin by discussing piecewise functions, then we'll transition to a discussion of these limits through graphs, through holes of graphs, one-sided limits and limits in general, as well as relationship to jumps and asymptotes. We can define functions through more than one equation. Now when we do this, we have to specify the values of x that apply to each equation. In other words, we're going to define the function piece by piece. The result is called a piecewise or piecewise defined function. Here's an example. Let f of x equal x squared plus 2 when x is less than 1, but equal 2x minus 3 when x is bigger than or equal to 1. f of x is defined piecewise. When x is less than 1, we use the equation f of x equals x squared plus 2. But when x is bigger than or equal to 1, we use the equation f of x equals 2x minus 3. So let's try to sketch a graph of this piecewise defined function. So we're going to take the parabola y equals x squared plus 2, but we're only going to consider x values less than 1. So from the left, we're going to stop at x equals 1. Here's our set of axes. Now the parabola y equals x squared plus 2 has a vertex 0 comma 2, but we're only going to include the portion of this parabola up to x equals 1. Here it is. Now, because we are not actually including the x value of 1, this only applies when x is less than 1, we indicate that with an open circle at the point that would have been on the graph at 1, 3. So we put this open circle there. That indicates this point is not actually on the graph, because we're only using the equation f of x equals x squared plus 2 when x is less than 1, but not including x equals to 1, and we indicate this with this open circle. Now we're going to graph y equals 2x minus 3, but we're only going to start this graph when x equals 1 and move to the right. This is just a straight line, and it's graphed like this. Now because this portion of f of x does include x equals 1, we indicate that with a filled in circle at that point on the graph. This filled in circle is how we indicate that that point is included in the graph when it's ambiguous, and an open circle means that it is not included. So let's sketch the graph of another piecewise defined function. When x is not equal to 2, we evaluate f of x equals x squared minus x minus 2 over x minus 2. But if x very specifically is equal to 2, then we simply declare that f of x equals 6. So we're going to graph this rational function x squared minus x minus 2 over x minus 2, but we're going to include a hole in the graph at the appropriate value that would have occurred when x equals 2. Observe, this rational function does simplify. The numerator factors as x plus 1 times x minus 2. So as long as x isn't equal to 2, we can cancel the shared factor of x minus 2 over x minus 2 and get just x plus 1. So as long as x isn't equal to 2, this rational function is simply equal to x plus 1. And in our equation for f of x, we are using this rational function exactly when x isn't equal to 2. So we're just going to graph the line y equals x plus 1, but we are not including what would happen when x equals 2. So at the appropriate point, we're going to use one of these open circles. So here are our axes. There's the line y equals x plus 1, but at the value where x equals 2, we've included an open dot to indicate that this point is not on the graph because we do not use this equation to evaluate f of x when x is equal to 2. What do we do when x equals 2? We've simply declared that if x equals 2, f of x equals 6. So at the point 2 comma 6, we're going to put one of these filled in circles to indicate this is a point on the graph. And there it is at 2 comma 6. So here is a graph of this function. Now let's look at the function f of x equals x squared plus x minus 2 over x minus 1. This is not defined piecewise. But x equals 1 is not in the domain of f. Is it a vertical asymptote or is it a hole? For x not equal to 1, 
f of x is simply equal to x plus 2 because that numerator factors as x plus 2 times x minus 1, which would cancel out for all x's except for x equals 1. In other words, f of x is the same thing as x plus 2, except x equals 1 isn't in the domain, so we have a hole at the point 1 comma 3. We get that y coordinate of 3 by plugging in x for what f of x is equal to, except for at the single point x equals 1. So we normally would get y equals x plus 2. This is what f of x equals for all values of x other than 1. When x is equal to 1, the function isn't defined because of that denominator, so we put an open circle to indicate that this single point has been removed from the graph. Let's continue looking at the same function with its same graph. f of 1 is undefined. 1 is not in the domain of this function because of the denominator x minus 1. But the values of f of x near x equals 1 are very, very close to 3. If we plug into the function, for example, values of x very close to 1 but not equal to it on the left, like 0 0.9, 0 0.99, or 0 0.999, we get out values of f of x 2.9, 2.99, 2.999. Because remember, as long as x isn't exactly equal to 1, f of x is simply equal to x plus 2. And what about values just to the right of 1, 1.1, 1 1.01, 1 1.001? Well, since these are not exactly equal to 1, they're in the domain, and here f of x is just x plus 2. So you get out 3.1, 3.01, 3.001, respectively. What we're observing is as x gets very close to 1 from either side, the value of f of x is approaching 3. And we say this by saying the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is 3. And we write this in the following way. It is read again as the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x equals 3, or because of what f of x is in this specific example, the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus x minus 2 over x minus 1 is equal to 3. In general, suppose f of x is a function. To say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is the number l, means as x gets closer and closer to a, x is approaching a, f of x gets closer and closer to l, the limit is l. So observe how this is phrased, the limit is l, x is approaching a, verbally, the x approaching a is sandwiched in the middle, it's read as the limit of f of x as x approaches a is l. And we can write it in one of two ways. This first presentation here is a bit more formal and technical. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l. This second presentation is a bit informal. f of x approaches l as x approaches a. Now, there's a very important point to make here and stress. The value of this limit as x approaches a of f of x does not depend on the value f of a. The limit only looks at values f takes nearby x equals a, but not actually equal a. Most topics in calculus involve limits in some way or another. Any rigorously defined calculus course will pretty much begin with a technical approach to these limits and build off of it from there. Here, however, we're just going to focus on how limits are used to describe features of graphs, like holes in graphs, jumps, or asymptotes. So one way we can view this, which is not the technical definition, but is good enough to start, the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l means that as x gets closer and closer to a, f of x is getting closer and closer to l. For example, let f of x be x squared plus 1 times x plus 1 over x plus 1, and let g of x simply be x squared plus 1, which is f of x in reduced form. The graph of f of x has a hole at x equals minus 1. x equals minus 1 is not in the domain of f of x, but it's a hole because that denominator of x plus 1 would cancel out with the factor x plus 1 in its reduced form. For x not equal to minus 1, however, f of x is the same thing as g of x. So other than that whole, f and g are the same thing. So let's look at their graphs. Here's the graph of f of x. It has a whole at negative 1, 2. g of x is just the parabola x squared plus 1, which includes that point negative 1, 2. 
Let's look at the limit of the functions as x approaches minus 1, but also as x approaches 0. Now we'd say the limit as x approaches minus 1 of f of x equals 2. If x is close to minus 1, but not equal to it, if x is close to minus 1, but not actually equal to it, f of x, the height, is getting very, very close to 2. So as x gets really close to minus 1, f of x is getting really close to 2. You would also say the limit as x approaches minus 1 of g of x is equal to 2. As x gets very close to minus 1, but not equal to it, the value of g of x is getting very close to 2. For both functions, when x is close to 0, the function value is close to 1. So as x approaches 0, f of x approaches 1. If x is close to 0, f of x is very close to 1. If x is very close to 0, g of x is also very close to 1. So we would say both the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x equals 1, but also the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x equals 1. Consider the function g of x with the following graph. We have a hole at a certain point, and then it has been moved to include the point 3, 6 instead of that hole. What is the value of g of 3, but in contrast, what's the value of the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x? So this filled in dot tells us that g of 3 is equal to 6. So if x is equal to 3, we find explicitly the point 3 comma 6 on the graph. But that isn't what the limit is asking. The limit as x approaches 3 of g of x does not actually care what is happening when x is equal to 3. Only what happens when x is very close to 3. So if we look at this graph, if x is very close to 3 but not exactly equal to it, then the function is putting out these values here or these values here, which seem to be very close to 2. So we would say the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x is 2. Note that this is not the same value of g of 3. This is a crucial point to get across. The limit as x approaches 3 of a function does not actually care what the function does at 3, only what it is doing very, very close nearby. Now it's possible that a limit might not even exist. This happens when the values of a function are not approaching a single value as x approaches some number a. For example, let's look at this piecewise defined function that we started with at the beginning of the lecture. Let's look at the limit as x approaches 1. So we graphed this earlier. We're just going to copy it from an earlier slide. Here was a graph of that function. So now when we ask what's the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, we want to let x be very close to 1 but not equal to it. When x is less than 1 and very close to 1, we're getting out heights that are very, very close to 3. But when x is bigger than 1 and not equal to it, we're getting out values very, very close to minus 1. Observe, I have not asked what happens when you plug in x equals 1. When you are nearby 1 to the left, your height is very close to 3. When you are nearby 1 to the right, your height is very close to minus 1. So there isn't a single value that this function is approaching as x gets very close to 1. So we would say that this limit as x approaches 1 of f of x does not exist, commonly abbreviated as DNE for does not exist. We can describe the situation in the previous example with a little more finesse, however, by talking about one-sided limits. We can write the limit as x approaches a, either from the left or from below, both mean the same thing, of f of x equals l. This means the values of f x are approaching l, but specifically you're plugging in x's nearby to a and to the left of a. You can also write the limit as x approaches a either from above or from the right. And similarly, this means you're looking at the values of f of x approaching l as x approaches a but restricted to being larger than a or to the right of a. Now when you see this notation, x with an arrow and an a and a superscript minus, you are only considering values of x that are less than a. Whereas when you see the superscript plus, you are only considering values larger than a. 
So let's look at that same graph again. Here it is. What's the limit as x approaches 1 specifically from the left? So now x is approaching 1 but only from this side, and then you're seeing that your heights are in fact approaching 3. What if x is approaching 1 but only from the right? Well, then your height is approaching minus 1. What's the limit as x approaches 1 without this distinction of from the left or from the right, however? We saw in the previous slide this limit does not exist because from one side it was approaching one number and from another it was approaching a different one. So the one-sided limits, the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x and the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x, certainly relate back to what is called the two-sided or overall limit, the limit as x approaches a of f of x. Specifically, the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l if and only if both the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x and the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x both equal the same number l. In other words, if the one-sided limits both exist and both are equal to each other, then the overall or two-sided limit exists and is equal to this common value of the one-sided limits. However, if the one-sided limits don't match each other or one of them fails to exist at all, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x does not exist. So here's a graph of a function. Let's examine all of these four things. The limit as x approaches 4 from the left, the limit as x approaches 4 from the right, the limit as x approaches 4, and also what is the value g of 4. So as x approaches 4, but specifically from the left, the height of this function is settling in on 1. So the limit as x approaches 4 from below of g of x is 1. In the x-axis, we are approaching 4 from below. On the y-axis, we are stating that we are approaching 1. However, as x approaches 4 from the right, what's happening to the height of this function? It's going to 3. So we would say the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of g of x is 3. Now the limit as x approaches 4 of g of x does not exist because these two one-sided limits are not the same number. But g of 4 is 3. If we simply plug in x equals 4, we do not use the open circle. We do use the filled in circle at a height of 3. Let's look at the graphs of f of x and h of x given here. Here's f of x, here's h of x. They're quite similar, but not exactly the same. h of x has a single dot given, whereas f of x just has a hole. Let's look at the limits as x approaches negative 4 from the left, from the right, and without distinction of f of x, as well as f of minus 4. And we're also going to ask the same questions about h of x. For f, all of the limit questions are equal to minus 2. If we consider x approaching negative 4 only from the left, then the heights are getting very, very close to minus 2. But if x approaches negative 4 from the right, then the heights are also getting very close to minus 2. Since these are the same, the limit overall is minus 2. However, f of minus 4 simply doesn't exist. So f of minus 4 is undefined or does not exist. Now for h, the limit as x approaches minus 4 from the left and from the right are doing the same thing that we saw in f. This graph is the same to the left and right of x equals minus 4. So since limits don't care about that specific x value, none of these limits actually care what's happening at x equals minus 4. And other than x equals minus 4, h and f are the same function. So the limit as x approaches minus 4 from the left, the limit as x approaches minus 4 from the right, and the limit as x approaches minus 4 of h of x are also minus 2 for exactly the same reasons. But here, h of minus 4 has been filled in at a height of 1, which is not the same value as these three, but that's fine. Remember, the limit as x approaches something doesn't actually look at the value of the function at that point, only very nearby. Let's look at the graph of g of x below. Here we have it. It's got a bunch of pieces and a couple of dots. 
let's find each of the following. There's going to be several. G of 1, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of G of x, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of G of x, and the limit as x approaches 1 of G of x, but also the same thing for 3. G of 3, the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of G of x, the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of G of x, and the limit as x approaches 3 of G of x. So one by one, let's go through this. First, what's g of 1? We have this dot here at a height of 3, so g of 1 is equal to 3. Next, we're looking at x approaching 1 specifically from the left, so x values are marching closer and closer to 1 from this side. What heights do we get out? They are settling down towards 2, so the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of g of x is 2. For c, we're going to look at x approaching 1 from above. The value of g of x is settling again towards 2. Now, since these two one-sided limits are the same number, we would say that the limit overall is that value. Whether I approach from the left or the right, I am always approaching the value 2. Now let's turn our attention to what's happening when x is equal to 3. Well, this filled-in dot tells us that when x is 3, g of 3 is equal to 2. But now, if x is approaching 3 specifically from the left, the heights we're getting out are getting very, very close to 4. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is 4. But what about as x approaches 3 from the right? Then the heights are settling down towards 1. So we'd say the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is 1. And since these two things are not the same, the limit as x approaches 3 does not exist because the left and right sided limits are not equal to one another. Now let's relate all of this discussion back to an older topic, vertical asymptotes, and the behavior of a function near those asymptotes. Suppose f of x is a function that has a vertical asymptote at x equals a. We're going to draw graphs to illustrate possible behaviors of a function near this vertical asymptote. We could approach positive infinity because the value of f gets arbitrarily large as x approaches a on either side. So the graph might look something like this. As x approaches a either from the left or from the right, the value of the function is going up and up and up towards infinity. In this case, we would say that both one-sided limits as x approaches a from the left or from the right are equal to infinity, and therefore, since they're the same thing, we would say the limit as x approaches a of f of x is infinite. So we would say either the limit from the left or the right are infinity, and since they're the same, the limit exists and is the same value, infinity. But we could also have a function becoming arbitrarily large and negative as x approaches a from either side. A picture like this. So here, we would say that all of the corresponding limits are minus infinity. As x approaches a from the left, the function goes off to minus infinity. As x approaches a from the right, the function goes off to minus infinity. And because those are the same thing, we would now write the limit as x approaches a of f of x also equals minus infinity. But you can also have a situation where a function is positive on one side and negative on the other. So this is like a mixed case where f is becoming very large to both sides of the vertical asymptote, but it's positive on one side and negative on the other. The graph might look something like this, or perhaps like this, which is just a mirror image. So this time, one of the one-sided limits is minus infinity and the other is plus infinity. So on this graph, for example, as x approaches a from below, the function is going to minus infinity whereas if x approaches a from above, the function is going to plus infinity. Here, as x approaches a from below, the function is going to plus infinity, but as x approaches a from above, the function is going to minus infinity. In both cases, these one-sided limits are not the same thing, and we would say that the two-sided or general limit does not exist. So in both graphs, we would write the limit as x approaches a of f of x does not exist. So let's look at an example by taking the graph of a function shown here. It looks like a mess. 
let's find all of the indicated limits, and there's going to be a whole bunch of them, writing DNE when a limit does not exist. So first, the limit as x approaches minus 4 from the left, right, and overall. Then we're going to look at the limit as x approaches minus 2 from the left, right, and overall. Then the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, right, and overall. And finally, we'll look at the limit as x approaches 5 from the left, from the right, and overall. So first up, the limit as x approaches minus 4 from the left. Now as x approaches minus 4 but only from the left, what's happening to the height of the curve? It's going down and down and down off to minus infinity. What's happening as x approaches minus 4 from the right? As x approaches minus 4, but specifically from the right, the value of this function is going up, up, up to plus infinity. Since these are not the same thing, we would say that the limit as x approaches minus 4 without indicating left versus right does not exist. Now let's turn our attention to what's happening nearby x equals minus 2. As x approaches minus 2 specifically from the left, the value of this function appears to be getting very, very close to 1. But as x approaches minus 2 from the right, the value of this function seems to be getting very, very close to 3. And because these are not the same thing, the limit as x approaches minus 2 without indicating left versus right does not exist. Now let's look at what's happening near x equals 3. As x approaches 3 from the left, the value of the function seems to be getting to minus 4. And as x approaches 3 from the right, the value of the function appears to be going again to minus 4. Since the one-sided limits are the same thing, we would now say the limit as x approaches 3 overall is minus 4. Now let's look at x equals 5. As x approaches 5 from the left, the function is going up, 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 up towards infinity. As x approaches 5 from the right, the function is going up, 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 up towards infinity. And because these are the same thing, we would properly write that the limit as x approaches 5 of f of x is infinity.